Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. And today, Master Joe, we are speaking about lifting for improving mobility. That's right. Yeah, lifting weights to get more flexible. Crazy. Who thought it was possible? I know it's a real convergence of two worlds. And I think for a lot of folks, they tend to think that those two activities are kind of uh, like mutually exclusive. Yes. Or like you, you can't do both. Almost opposite. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's funny too, because looking at that, um, the, well, I guess the, the, the key point for, that we want to communicate to you guys is why this is so relevant to your BJJ and to point out to you that you're potentially already doing a lot of this anyway in your strength training. Yes. Um, before we go into it, give me like, give me a couple of your top examples of like strength, like conventional strength exercises where you are building flexibility at the same time? Um, an A to G squat. So when we say A to G, we're saying ass to grass, which is where you have a weight across your back or it could potentially be a front squat, a barbell across your chest, and you are squatting all the way down to the deepest depths uh, with your heels on the ground, bringing your hips as close to your heels as possible. And I'll have you guys know, if you, if you haven't gone that deep, even if it's not heavy, you are going to feel your Achilles. You're going to feel, you're going to feel everything through that range. And the great thing about it there is you do get more flexible by loading up through that full range. And you, you know, people aren't necessarily aware because a lot of people never go that low in their squat. What else? What other exercises? Um, Give me a favorite. Um, I think a, a favorite for me for like a, a full range of motion is a, uh, a skin the cat that is like one of the movements that i admire i can't say i'm really good at it but having done it afterwards i'm always like wow i i've just skin the cat for you guys who are not aware uh you probably might have done it when you're a kid you're hanging out on monkey bars you, you know like you, you swing upside down and and you spin all the way through so you're still hanging onto the bars you roll your feet back over your head you're inverting almost like a backwards roll and you stay holding onto the bar and now your feet are pointing down to the ground and your shoulder is almost at full flexion. Hopefully you don't double dislocate your shoulders. When you were a kid, it was almost at full flexion. Yeah, it was. Now so you're stuck somewhere at like this <laughs> in horrible between. bend. Yeah. And uh, you, you might let go and drop back down or you might spin back around. You might do this a couple of times. And this is like a, a fun thing to do when you're a kid. But as an adult, this can be torture. Um, and another movement that I, I love, uh, which Joe, I think both you and I, love is the uh, Cossack squat but I really like to do this uh, under load because after a while it gets a bit boring um, and you want to push yourself and you want to also push your range adding some load to it can really uh, create a lot more uh, bang for your buck doing that move yeah yeah classic examples and all things I mean really that that we use in our training stuff that we use in the program um I guess like to, to, to give folks a little bit of context about how this works, um, you, you can stretch. So think about like the conventional ways of stretching that you know. So think about like um, you're trying to stretch your hamstrings. You're doing the classic ones, sitting on the floor. you got your other leg bent, sort of foot tucked in against your thigh and then you're like reaching forward, trying to like grab your toes and you know, you got this horrible hamstring stretch going on. Uh, that's one way to stretch the hammies. Another way is to perform some stiff-legged deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts. So yes. think, all right, you're in the gym, you're doing four sets of 10 reps of Romanian deadlift, could be with a kettlebell, could be with a barbell. And the idea is you're lowering into that bottom position with your back nice and straight, maybe a little bend at the knee, mm -hmm. depending on if you need to or not. Uh, but the back stays straight, the hip is hinging, and you feel this huge, great stretch going on through the hammy once again right now it's a different sensation isn't it because yeah. you're you're under load like yeah your whole nervous system is like your legs are all switched on because you're standing on your legs yes. you're standing on your feet so your foot your calf your quads like all the stabilizers around the knee everything's on it's all working yeah and you, you know let's say you're holding onto a barbell and the barbell's got a bit of weight on it so let's say it's a 50 kilo romanian deadlift that you're doing you're hinging down in this position, holding for half a beat, coming back up, and you're doing your reps. You can, you can imagine, if you've done those before, you, you know that that experience is completely different to what you feel as a sensation when you're like just trying to stretch your hammies. Yeah, definitely. And 
Um, I would go a step further having experienced this under your supervision, Joe, um, doing Jefferson's. So I had always been aware of, of Jefferson curls as a, as a thing. And now, guys, this is a very advanced movement which can be done, you know, simply done with a very light weight, but advanced practitioners can do it under a fair degree of load. Um, I went to the JB camp to get away. Uh, we, where we had gone away and part of the night training was... Um, the night training, oh, the, the afternoon, the, the evening afternoon, session? Yeah, the evening session, yeah. right? And uh, I was up on a step and I was with Faraz, our good friend, Faraz uh, Durrani, who's a legend and actually a very capable human. Yeah, and, he's, a, uh, he's an athlete. Yeah, he's, a, he's, he's very capable. And uh, I remember I was hanging and I was holding a kettlebell. It wasn't that heavy. It was maybe like 10 kilos, 8 kilos. But Faraz was like trying to get me to draw down and, and, and push down. And, and uh, I think maybe you jumped in and you were like, nah. And you, you, you do this thing where you like put your arm in and you're like, crush my arm with your abs. You know? And I'm like, what? You're like, draw down with your abs. Use your quads. Like, get lower. And I was like, oh my God. Like, um, the interesting thing about this, guys, if, if you can picture it, it's as if I'm doing a toe touch. Um, like reaching straight down for my toes, my knees are locked out. I'm holding a kettlebell to help draw me into the stretch. I'm not passively hanging there. But then Joe is asking me to flex my abdominals, to draw me into a tighter compression and then really use my quads to fire up to allow my hamstrings to like somewhat disengage. <laughs> and it's such an intense experience. Yeah. And then now a lot come, of shit going on. Oh man. <laughs> moving and shaking and then come up and it's like all right that's one get going again <laughs> and man it's amazing just you do get this amazing improvement in range in such a short amount of time but also uh how sore <laughs> you can get off the back of doing some of this but the the what i found as someone who's spent a long time stretching all kinds of different types of flexibility modalities doing a movement like that with that intention and a degree of load, it, uh, you can notice an improvement very quickly and it's a totally different feeling. Yeah, yeah, it's a great observation. And it is, um, you know, if, we, if we, we try and keep it simple, but what's going on there is that you are, you're really, you're taking your nervous system, which your, your flexibility is, is regulated by your nervous system essentially, right? And a, the simple way that you can think about this is, um, when people are under a general anesthetic in hospital, their bodies become incredibly limp and flexible through all sorts of ranges. You know, who knows what the fuck they do with your body when you're having a surgery, but you know, your legs can go anywhere, your yeah. spine can, um, and it's because your nervous system is shut down. There is no, there's nothing there that's like applying a handbrake, right? So if you're someone that's like, oh, I'm a little bit tight through a particular position, uh, you you want to look at that as okay? It's actually like a neurological restriction, mm. um, and there are there are like tissue things, like soft tissue things, adhesions and whatnot. But for the most part, your flexibility is determined by your nervous system. So when we do mobility work, right? And this is like active mobility. This is even doing the Jefferson curls. This is maybe a dynamic warm up before jiu jitsu. Like mobility work encompasses all that stuff. Um, we're really going through a process of convincing the nervous system to allow us to go a little bit further. And the nervous system requires, uh, it requires like quality convincing. Like it needs to know that- There's you a have, reason. Yeah, it needs to know there's a reason. It needs to know you have control. Yes. And it needs to know you're strong enough to go into that position, right? Mm. So you, you can experience this with someone who has, uh, someone who's on the weaker side of the spectrum. Like say someone who has like weakness in the lower back. If you get them to do a Jefferson curl, they might be successful. And Jefferson Curl, like JT described, standing, but it's, it's, it's toe touching, but you're rolling, like you're rounding your back. It's, it's like the complete opposite of all the rules of a deadlift. Yes. There's no neutral spine. You're actually trying to cascade each vertebra one by one into this bottom position. Uh, but if you take someone with a weak lower back and you try and get them into that, uh, get them into the bottom position, say with a light kettlebell, mm -hmm. eight kilos, uh, what you'll notice is, at a certain point, they will unlock their knees yep. uh, involuntarily yep. because they're trying to remove stress from the lower back. Yes, that's right. Because their nervous system is like, I'm not fucking equipped to let you go into that end range with the knees locked. That's yep. too much load for, my, for, this, 
for this part of the, the body. N- nervous system says no. Right? Yeah. And so, so what we've got here is like this, this crossover between strength and flexibility. And that's, that's really what we're getting at is if you can work, if you can use weights uh, intelligently in your mobility training and you can understand the process that's going on, this is really what we're trying to teach folks, yeah. um, you can get incredibly flexible or you can become incredibly mobile in a short space of time. Yeah. However, and we can go more into this after, you've got to respect that it, it, you're also going closer towards potential injury. So if you yes. don't respect it, the, the, you, you know, like Romanian deadlift or Jefferson curl, way more chances of fucking yourself up as compared to like a hamstring stretch after class. Of course. Yeah. And, and that is the thing guys. Like it's not to say that we want to put you in risky situations, but it, it is, you know, you are doing something that is more extreme. And if you don't have the habit of relaxing your nervous system consistently through breath and concentration through doing normal kind of uh, a routine for mobility and flexibility, chucking some weight on your back and doing it is not, is not the first step. But that said, uh, if we take this back to just looking at the exercise selection that we do in Bulletproof, we do unilateral full range movements because we want you not only to get familiar, like a single leg deadlift. Uni- unilateral mean, meaning one, one-sided. One-sided. And not exclusively. We do bilateral stuff. No, we do bilateral. Stuff, we do a good mixture of everything. But we get a, a solid dose of the single-sided stuff. Definitely. And, you know, I think what is – on paper, it looks very simple. I've had a lot of people say this to me. I've had a lot of people say, yeah, the Bulletproof workouts, man, like I just started – It's way harder than it looks. It's like, yeah, these movements are really bang for your buck because not only are they putting a certain amount of load um, on the working muscles, but they are also providing a degree of uh, work through improving your flexibility through the kind of agonist-antagonist muscles. So, yeah, we, we are getting you to work a, a range maybe beyond what you're used to. The good thing about putting a small amount of weight in your hand is by engaging your nervous system and forcing you to create stability, this actually will enable you to get more range than if you were just sitting there yanking on the muscle. So there are plenty of movements where adding a small amount of load enables you to actually dial up the tension in your nervous system. So this principle is called um, irradiation. Science time, guys. It is science time. Uh, Get you your can protractors and your compasses <laughs> out. <laughs> Nerd it up. <laughs> Joe is flicking me in my four eyes right now. Um, but no, it's one of those things, guys, that like, f- for example, if we just had, if we were having an arm wrestle, Joe and I were having an arm wrestle, <laughs> I'd obviously win. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I'd be like a torn bicep, JT. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you know, if you would, if you guys wanted to win an arm wrestle, you wouldn't sit there limply and just put your arm up. You grab the underside of the table, you tense up. They've often got that handle. Yeah, got the, the handle, right? The opposite handle. To yeah. really get it in there. Because when you create uh, nervous system tension in other parts of your body, it has a cascade and rippling effect through your nervous system. So by creating a degree of tension in other parts of the body, you can cr- generate more force through the active muscles. So they've shown this with like vertical jump. They've had people bite on a mouthpiece. You may see some powerlifters put a mouthpiece in before they deadlift so they can bite with their jaw because this dials up their nervous system 5%. That's where the terminology pillow biter comes from. (laughs) I don't know if that's entirely true. Did I misunderstand that? Sorry. (laughs) That wasn't in the show notes, Joe. Um, (laughs) But um, yeah, and and so talking about this relevant to you improving your mobility – you just doing a bodyweight squat is great, but if we put a five kilo weight in your hands and get you to take more tension through your anterior chain, your, your abdominals, bracing through your shoulders and your arms, you will be able to achieve a greater range of motion. Yeah, it's a great point. And, and I mean, here's the thing. Um, I think the squat's a really good example. If you just do like a bodyweight squat and, and we say to you, hey, um, you know, like keep your knees out, keep your feet flat and your back straight and go as deep as you can, do that 10 times. Um, you'll do an okay job, like you'll do an okay job of that, but you chances are most people will round their back a little bit at the bottom because they're trying to get a bit deeper. Um, you know, maybe the knees push in a little bit, you know, just trying to get that extra depth, Heels right? creep up off the ground. 
Yeah. Whereas if you have a barbell on your back and it doesn't have to be heavy, but say it's 40 kilos or even just an empty bar. Um, and we say, all right, keep your back straight, knees out, feet flat. All of a sudden, cause you've now got this weight sitting on top of your spine, Stings. everything lights up right through the trunk and oh, yep. Like you said, like shoulders are active up oh, grips active coming down. You've now essentially like stimulated all like neurologically all over the body. So everything is firing and it's in a much better position to, to do quality work. Um, so the, the, the benefit is not necessarily in the, the load of the weight pushing you deeper, but it's in that load extracting a better performance from you. Yes. And that's, you know, that's the beauty of Romanian deadlifts. It's the beauty of working on the rings, things like skin the cat. It's a beauty of like, even like simple things like, um, like kettlebell windmills, yes. right? That like these exercises are like, oh, it's just an exercise. There's actually a lot going on in that thing. And it's very specifically chosen for that reason. And I think it's like, we can look at the load as a helper, as a feedback. It's a soundboard, it bounces back because it's a really good point about the windmill. I love the windmill as a kettlebell windmill because it forces you to think about muscles that you wouldn't normally load through a range you wouldn't normally do. But this translates to BJJ. So if you are stiff arming someone and you're trying to get them the hell off side control and you're trying to stand up, you're, you know, being able to lock your arm out, being able to brace through your obliques, use your hip muscles and stand the hell up is just a movement that's not trained in conventional, conventional linear or even machine-based lifting. So that's why like, we don't really incorporate to, we don't really incorporate machines in the Bulletproof BJJ program. It's all pretty much free weight, body weight movements. And that weight being in your hand brings your attention to where is my hand in space? Where is my shoulder? What am I doing with my hip? And relevant to that, you can get a better mastery of your own movement and a better understanding of the different stretches and contractions that are taking place. I think there's um there's something that's really important to mention and I mean particularly for for you guys like our listeners because we we can make a general we can generalize and say that the majority of BJJ people uh, are on the tight end of the spectrum Correct. right strong good at jiu-jitsu don't quite have the range of motion that you that you that would be ideal for the sport right so okay a little bit tight so it, let's take a really classic exercise that gets used probably overused quite often, which is a barbell back squat. Yep. Right. Um, we, we have used those in the past. They feature a little bit in our program, but they're not a huge emphasis for us. But here's the thing. If you are on that tighter end of the spectrum, when you go to do some barbell back squats, so you're getting in, you've got the bar on your back, you're trying to go as deep as you can, knees out, chest up, all that stuff. Um, the, that exercise for you, if you have tight hips and like a tight spine, that exercise for you will be vastly restricted by your flexibility, not your strength, Yes. right? So you will not be able to get into a super deep squat position with great mechanics uh, because your body won't let you. So what you see then for people who are in that position is they do like a half squat mm. and then they add more weight. And so they load this thing up like, well, I'm doing this to get strong. So I got to put more fucking weight on the bar. Of course. Put more weight and start doing half reps. Now, the problem is, is you're only ever expressing half your range of motion. So what we try to encourage with people, and this conversation I find myself having quite a lot, is that that exercise for that moment in time for you is essentially a stretch. Yeah. It's a mobility drill. It's not about the load that you're shifting through your half range of motion. It's about getting into a deeper position over time. So I encourage that person to go to the absolute limit of their range. And that means keeping the back straight, keeping the knees out, keeping the feet flat, good tension, good body position, but absolutely getting your hips as low as you can, hanging out for a couple of seconds, coming back up and week after week after week after week, making that depth slightly deeper or slightly greater mm. um when you get to the point where okay your range of motion is now what we would consider acceptable okay let's start to load that thing up and it's at that point that you almost cross the threshold from that exercise being a, a mobility drill to now being a strength drill yeah and it's i think that's something we take for granted because we've got pretty good mobility right yep and 
if you have the good mobility or if you have the good flexibility rather like if you've got that range of motion you can start strengthening it right away yes it's like okay cool no worries you can go all the way down all the way up position looks good Fantastic. okay look, cool let's keep increasing the load yeah but if you don't yet have that range of motion, then you don't have the right to, to load it up yet. Yeah, you must. I think that this is a quote I got from Eric Creasy, which is add range before you add load. Like you need to have a full healthy range of motion before you start loading that bad boy up. And I think the other thing we probably take for granted too, Joe, is that we are strength uh, obsessive, you know, movement obsessed people. And a lot of people don't know the breakdown. It's like, yeah, I squat and I suck and I don't know why. And I always hurt my back. Yeah, and I, I just don't get it. And a lot of people, because maybe they're training by themselves, they don't have a training partner, they got no one looking at their back saying, hey man, you've got a bit of butt wink, like you shouldn't squat as low. Uh, we need to work on this range first. They don't necessarily know that, hey, my tight Achilles means I need to work on my, you know, they don't know the tight Achilles is holding them back. Yeah. Well, they don't know. They're not getting coached. They're not getting coached. And chances, I mean, they might be, but it could be from some other guy at the gym who also has no idea. Yes. And is just is just regurgitating some bro science. Yeah, it's the- And uh, it's like just this proliferation of shit information. <laughs> blind leading the blind. It's that white belt. We all know that white belt who wants to give a seminar. Hey man, let me show you. This works on all white belts, bro. <laughs> it's a hundred percent. It's like- It's called a hill hook. <laughs> <laughs> Just heard about it. Yeah. Dude, I, I, I visited um, a couple of gyms recently when I was out on the road and uh, just like strength training gyms. And I one of the gyms I went to, um, I was just, it was pretty busy and I was just watching everyone was back squatting. And I, I'll be honest, man, I didn't see one good looking back squat. Right. I'm like, every fucking person here is way too tight and squatting way too heavy. And what that, what that says to me, it, like what that is, is just a ticking time bomb. Yes. It's like, man, you can like, sure, you can like max it out on this exercise week after week, grinding away at, at your knees, which are in a bad position, fucking placing, you know, like undue stress on your vertebra. But sooner or later, you're going to pay a price for that. And whether it's the back injury that goes from being a little bit of a niggle to now being a chronic thing that's just stopping you from from putting a bar on your back anymore, or it's like, oh, fuck, I... I, you know, I've, I've partially torn some meniscus or like whatever it is, you're going to pay a price at some point. So yeah, this, I mean, it goes back to that mechanics thing, right? It's like mm. move well, full range of motion, then you have the right to load it. So what do we do um, for all our crew out there who are like, oh, I thought back squats were good or then now they're uncertain. They're like, oh man, now you've put a bit Joey of- and JT said, don't back squat. Oh no, what do I do? What can someone do- um, Let's say now they, they're like, okay, maybe my back squat so sucks and I'm not sure why. What is a, a good move or a good alternative for them to do, to, for their legs to get stronger, which isn't a back squat? What would you recommend? Um, two alternatives that come to mind. One would be like a split squat. Yep. Either a Bulgarian split squat where the rear leg is elevated or, or just a regular split squat that's kind of more like a lunge. Yeah, so you split squat looks like a lunge basically. If you've, you've never heard that term before, but you've, you've seen what a lunge looks like, um, yeah, Bulgarian split squat usually refers to the back foot being elevated on a bench or a block. And depending on the variation, the person might be resting their weight on their toe, like their, their toe is in contact with the bench or their forefoot. So their toe is pointed and resting on a bench. Yeah. And those, I mean, I would say, and obviously with those, the, with the weight is primarily in the front leg. The beauty of those exercises is, is that it's, it's unilateral. So it's one-sided. It allows you to focus on that one side that's working. Um, and it helps to bypass a lot of the common mobility restrictions we see with uh, bilateral exercises like a back squat. Yep. What, what about you? What would be your go-to? Mine is that? for sure the pistol. Um, since I first saw pistols many years ago, I got really obsessed with them. And I think the reason why I've kind of circled back around to it because I, I went away from pistols for a little while and I was looking at shrimp squats or skater squats as they can be referred to because I feel like it, it, it's harder to hide. There's a lot of people out there kind of doing pistols who are like bouncing out of the bottom and it's actually really hard to do that with a, a shrimp squat. Like if you haven't got control there, mm. you, 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 you're done basically. But why I really love a pistol is it's quite easy to go from, I can't do a pistol to go, okay, well, how low can you go in this range? Now, if you guys out there are trying pistols and you're like, oh, I suck, there's no way I'll ever master it. 
there's two really good bits of feedback a pistol will give you. If you're falling backwards, that tells you that you're lacking range at the ankle. So then that's a project. We've got to work on your ankle mobility. But if you find that you can actually get a decent amount of depth in your pistol, but you get to the bottom and you can't come out, this tells you that we actually need a lot more work around the hip. So even though, yes, pistols work your quads like nobody's business, um, the your deficiencies will be shown by either falling back or lack of kind of hip drive out of the hole, which is the bottom of the squat. So if you right now can squat on one leg, like sit in a chair, sit on the edge of the chair, you stand on one leg and you can stand up out of that chair. If you can now sit back down to the chair with control without collapsing and work there, that's a good height for you to start with. And then gradually what you do is you work lower and lower and lower while improving your hip strength, improving your ankle mobility. And then before too long, if you can do 10 pistols, that's really good. I mean, that's, that's, that's stronger knees than most people. And you haven't had to put a bar on your back. You haven't put your back at risk. And you've actually improved your flexibility while getting stronger. 100%. Guys, I think, um, I think there's a couple of really good takeaways there in just terms of uh, like exercise variations to, to have a play with. If you are the kind of person that's like, yeah, I fucking back squat all the time or whatever. And it, I don't know, whatever I'm doing, it's just not working for me. Try some different stuff because you're going to address, uh, you're going to be addressing the same working muscle groups and you're going to be building strength and building muscle mass, but you don't have to face the same restrictions in terms of mobility and potentially the same injury hazards. Mm. The, uh, the, the big takeaway for me from, from that episode is to understand that there is almost like a bit of a timeline depending on how you move when you're doing a strength exercise where it is a bit of a mobility drill at first and it might take some time before it becomes a pure strength drill. Embrace that. Don't try and push through it and load the exercise up unnecessarily because that's where you bring yourself undone. If you respect that process, start light, work to the best absolute quality of the technique you can, then over time, uh, once you become mobile enough, the strength gains will be astronomical and they'll be quality gains. And just on that, I would say what's really worthwhile is if you are not sure, and for those of you out there, I know you're not, not everyone out there is trying to be a bloody Instagram model, but you guys shouldn't shy away. Well, most of us are, but no, you should film yourself doing it. Like if you're really not sure, say you've got no one to train with, and it's just you, and that's fine. You need to, you need to actually film yourself and, and have a look at it. Now, you may not know what you're looking at. That's okay. You can post that video on our community group. Send it to us. Send it, or if you feel self-conscious and you're, I don't want anyone to see it, my terrible technique, and maybe it's actually really good, just directly message us. We'll look at it, and we can give you feedback. That's what we're here for. So we're not trying to set you guys up for a deficiency, which is like, yeah, you really need feedback. Good luck with that. See you later. Peace. Um, film it. We've got to know what's going on because you don't necessarily know how to fix it, but we do. So that's where it's definitely worth um, checking out the um, Facebook community page, which is Bulletproof for BJJ Community. Um, I'm going to be posting more of my training on there because I have my own deficiencies that I am working on. <laughs> you better who's, believe it. <laughs> who thought it was possible? Um, yeah, and... And look, there's no shame in that because the places where I'm strong and, and there's other places where I'm mobile and then there's places where I, I've neglected and I've got to work on that stuff. And uh, I, I think there's nothing wrong. That's a big admission coming from JT, guys. I hope you know, <laughs> big admission. I'm just doing it for Joe so he feels a little bit better. You know, I've got to show some humility. Um, but guys, look, I, I, I think my biggest thing is quality over quantity. And I've had to remove my ego from my lifting because honestly, I want to feel healthy and I want to feel good. And the, the best thing I can do is to do something a bit lighter, but do it well. And I can take pride in that because mastery or movement mastery is way better than being a gym hero and lifting a big weight poorly. So that, that would be my personal advice to you. Awesome. Guys, thank you. Hope that helps. Uh, if you need anything from us, you've got the Facebook group bulletproofofbjj.com um, hit us up if you want to check out the program as a free trial and uh, we will catch you guys next week sure peace thank you, Joey. Thank you brother <laughs>